Millions of adults are living with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Without education and treatment, ADHD can lead to chronic fatigue, anxiety, disorganization, and issues at work and at home. As a triple board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Judy Ho is a go-to expert in this field. So in this series, she shares that expertise and breaks down how to reach the right diagnosis, find sensible treatment options, and realistically achieve goals at work and at home when living with ADHD. Welcome back to Med Circle, Dr. Judy. Always wonderful to see so you. So great to work with you again, Kyle. We're talking about ADHD, but specifically in adults. Let's first define what ADHD is. So attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a condition where the individual might have a lot of attention symptoms, where they have difficulty focusing, or they might also at the same time have hyperactivity and impulsiveness symptoms. It's a developmental disorder means that some symptoms have to be present in childhood, although for a lot of people, they're able to sort of manage until they get older and the task demands of everyday life become greater. Now, how is this different from ADD? So ADD was an older term where they talked about it in earlier versions of the DSM. And ADD didn't contain the hyperactive impulsiveness mm. uh, features. But through a lot of research, they found that actually they were correlated, that it's actually one part of the same syndrome. Although still there are people who have ADHD, but inattentive type, meaning that they don't really have the hyperactivity or impulsiveness symptoms. Then we have the individuals who are just hyperactive, impulsive, not inattentive, there's relatively fewer people that are like that. And then we have a good number where they have the combined symptoms of both the inattention and the impulsivity and hyperactivity. Now, what are some common misconceptions when it comes to adults who either believe they have ADHD or have received the diagnosis? I feel like everybody thinks that they have ADHD and I think everybody is on the spectrum at some point, mm. at some time. But if you just have inattentiveness occasionally, but it doesn't actually impair your functioning and you're not that distressed about it, then you're not really going to qualify for that diagnosis of ADHD. Adulthood ADHD is relatively at 50% of the prevalence rate as childhood ADHD. So national studies have shown that ADHD in childhood is about 5% of the population. In adulthood, it's two and a half. Got so it. roughly 50% of people recover from ADHD by the time they hit the age of 18, and then 50% go on to continue to suffer symptoms in their adulthood. And I think a big misconception is that it looks the same for some reason, because mm. it doesn't. Mm. In adulthood ADHD, the hyperactive and impulsive features look very different. As a child, the child's running around the classroom, getting out of their seat, really being very rule, not abiding, you know, yeah. which causes them negative attention, and that's usually when the teachers identify them and talk to the parents. In adulthood, they may still have that restlessness, but in, as adults, we're a bit more controlled in terms of our behavior. Right. So we're not gonna be running around when we know we're not supposed to, but you might just feel really fidgety, and so sometimes you see individuals like tapping very nervously on the desk or on the table, and that may be a manifestation of an adulthood form of combined ADHD. Now, we'll get into the diagnostic process and the criteria in the DSM for ADHD, but as you alluded to earlier, a lot of people think that they have ADHD because they can't sit down and read a book for more than an hour, or they can't really focus when they're having a conversation. When is it ADHD, and when is it you're just not interested in whatever is going on? Exactly, and I think that that is even more confusing because of the fact that right now our culture promotes a lot of inattentiveness. There's so many things mm -hmm. trying to grab at our attention. There's been a lot of research that shows that the more often that you're on social media, the more you actually do start to show some signs of inattentiveness. Doesn't mean that social media causes ADHD. Okay. But you are going to be more inattentive. Just the other day, I was watching the news and not only are the newscasters talking, there's a little ticker on the bottom that's rolling with more facts. There's pop-ups in the corner. And then a couple of people that I was watching the news with were also I knew it. looking at the app for yep. CNN at yep. the same time that we were watching CNN. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's a lot of things pulling at our attention anyway. So everybody experiences it from time to time. But when you actually have the clinical features of ADHD, it's very different. And in adults, there's a lot of emotional dysregulation going on. They have a harder time tolerating frustration. Um, they may have a lot less patience. 
it may be a lot harder for them to plan ahead and to、mm. organize themselves. So they feel very disorganized and jumbled in their head all the time. And again, this is not just periodically. You've got a busy day or a week. This is something that's persistent that keeps coming up. That actually does cut into your quality of life and possibly even impairs relationships. And in fact, one of the biggest complaints of adulthood ADHD is difficulty in their relationships, whether it's with friends or romantic partners. Because if, as you might imagine, if you're not really attending to your partner. You're constantly asking for repetition, and your partner gets very impatient with you, saying, "You never listen to me. You're、right. never focusing on me." And so it can cause a lot of difficulties in terms of their relationships. What are you finding as common co-occurring disorders with ADHD? The most common co-occurring disorder with ADHD is depression. So、mm. that's been something that's pretty well established, and in the literature, that happens to people who have childhood ADHD as well as adulthood ADHD. As a result of people underperforming in school because they're diagnosed with ADHD, they start to develop anxiety as well. So that's another common co-occurring issue, and the anxiety is almost secondary to the ADHD oftentimes because their ADHD makes them feel incompetent, and so then they start to have performance anxieties and feelings of inadequacy that then add on to those anxiety symptoms that eventually become clinical. There's also a subset of ADHD children and adults that experience substance issues, and so individuals with ADHD tend to have a higher risk for substance use later. They tend to try substances earlier than their peers, and as adults, they tend to have more difficulties with substance use. I think another really important correlating factor is that adults with ADHD have a higher risk for suicidal ideation.、Mm -hmm. Than the average population, so they are more at risk for a number of different types of psychological issues. And on top of that, they're also oftentimes comorbid with other types of learning disabilities.、Mm -hmm. And again, sometimes it's hard to tease out if the learning disability is really its own disorder, or if the learning difficulties really come from the ADHD. Right. It originates from the fact that they can't pay attention, so they haven't been able to take in the kind of information they should have by a certain age or by a certain grade. So, if I'm an adult and I have been diagnosed with depression and ADHD, do I treat one before the other or both at the same time? I think it's always helpful to address both at the same time because at that point, I feel like for adults. They really have seen the interplay between those two conditions. You know, they kind of reinforce each other. The ADHD leads to more emotional dysregulation that could include mood dysregulation, and that mood dysregulation makes the ADHD worse. One of the symptoms of depression that not everybody has, but some people do, is that they have difficulty making decisions and problems concentrating.、Yeah. So when somebody also has ADHD, it's going to be interesting to delineate. Where does that concentration problem come from? Is it part of the depression, or is it part of the ADHD?、Mm -hmm. And maybe it doesn't really matter that much. It's just that they obviously are related,、mm -hmm. and probably the best way forward is to treat both at the same time. Now you have a private practice as well as the hundred other things that you do, <laughs> and part of that private practice, I'm assuming you've seen adults come in with ADHD.、Yes. What are they struggling with with untreated ADHD? So untreated ADHD for adults, it can wreak a lot of havoc into their lives. It's hard for them to stay motivated, to accomplish, to not get in trouble at work, to hold a job. In fact, I have found a lot of individuals with ADHD as adults, they've managed their work life in such a way that kind of makes the ADHD less prominent. So、mm. what I mean by this is, a lot of adults with ADHD, they become their own bosses because then. No one's disciplining them. They have to discipline themselves, though. So it could get in the way of their level of success. But if they're running their own store or they're an entrepreneur and running their own company, then sometimes I see adults with ADHD fielding out tasks that they're not very good at because of their ADHD conditions. So that there are people who can work on it for them,、mm. and then they only focus on the types of tasks that they really want to do themselves. But the caveat, of course, is that people with adulthood ADHD they don't love schedules. And so they tend to have these more、uh, entrepreneurial type positions where they can wake up and start working when they want to, and maybe they'll work at night too. But it's kind of on their own time. But that sometimes can make the ADHD worse because people with ADHD need structure. And so maybe as a way of them trying to design their life around their condition, sometimes they make those symptoms actually a little. Less easy to manage because、right. then they're not sleeping at the right times, and、right. then they're up at all hours, and then it cuts into their next day and the productivity and the concentration that they need. Yeah, understood. Well, we have a lot to talk about in this series, and we'll start in our next session talking about the causes and different risk factors associated with adult ADHD.
Subscribe below and remember this video just scratched the surface. For more in-depth videos on mental health topics, go to medcircle.com and join for free.